coming up on Fresh View with Pastor Inkechi Ene. God expects the word to be clear to you. God expects the word, though walked with by faith and believed by faith, God expects the word to be a tangible concept to you. Something you can, you can bet your life on, let me put it that way. Something that you can say, no, I know without a shadow of doubt that if this is what the word says, then this is what it is. That is how real God expects the word to be to you. Welcome to Fresh Dew. I'm Pastor Nketi Ene, and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Dew. You know, this is an exciting season. Towards the end of the year, we go from the Thanksgiving season, and now we gravitate towards the Christmas season, and it's full of joy and Thanksgiving this period. Well, today I'm going to be preaching a message titled, The Threefold Manifestation of the Word. And this season, it's good to keep our focus on the Word of God the threefold manifestation of the word. This is the first part of that message series. So let's settle down. Let's tell people that it's time for fresh tea. Why your mates are out there? Becoming doctors and lawyers. You want to finish my food in the house. Ebuka doesn't listen to me. He never believes he can be wrong than me right. This Christmas at the Carpenter's Church, Port Harcourt. I should have finished eating by now and be on my way out, if not for this, your merciless waitress. Friday, 22nd of December, 2017, by 5.30 p.m. Uncle, please excuse me. The children of Israel, the children of Israel. When the children of Israel were doing all these things, what were the adults of Israel doing? Noel Show, an opera extraordinaire. The threefold manifestation of the word. That's our message for today. And this is part one of that message series. You know, when we talk about the word, everything that we will ever be and everything we'll ever do as believers should be, you know, focused and revolving around the word of God. Let me say that again. Everything we'll ever be, everything we'll ever do should have its focus and should revolve around the Word of God. The Word of God should be the singular most important thing to you as a child of God. Now let's look at something in John chapter 1 and verse 1 and 2. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Very profound but very simple statements. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He, showing the Word is a person, he was in the beginning with God. Let's make some fundamental statements before we really kick into the word of God for today, which is the threefold manifestation of the word. Let's lead up with some fundamental statements. First of all, the word is all we need. And that's, that may look like a simple statement, but again, it's also very profound. Child of God, the word is all that you need. I'll say it again. The word is all that you need. If it is not generated, produced, by the word, if it is not, you know, um, 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 if it's not, if it's not referenced to the word, then you really don't need it. The word is all you need. The word is the singular, most dependable anchor in your life as a child of God. And I can tell you in these last days, you need to have an anchor you can rely on. So I'll say it again. The word is all you need. The word is all you need. If it is not from the word, then you don't need it. The word is all you need. It is the singular, most dependable anchor in your life in these stormy days, in these end times, as a child of God. The word is all you need. The second fundamental thing we want to say about the word of God is that the word is not restricted to any season. Glory be to God. The word is not restricted to any season. You know, at different seasons, Christmas time, Easter time, we always celebrate different things. The word of God is relevant at all times. The word is not restricted 
to any season. So therefore, in every season of your life, in any situation you find yourself at any time, you should celebrate the word of God, child of God. When the sun is shining, celebrate the word of God. When it looks like things are, you know, down and dark, celebrate the word of God. When your health is challenged, celebrate the word of God. When your body is strong, celebrate the word of God. When you've got money in your account, celebrate the word of God. And when it looks like you have no idea where your next meal is going to come from, celebrate the word of God. The word is not restricted to any season. Look at what we read here. The word has no beginning. As it began the beginning, and the word is eternal, so it has no end. That's why it's not restricted to any season. It's not restricted to time and space. The word began the beginning, and the word is eternal, so it has no end. The word is not restricted to any season. It's not restricted to time and space. Glory be to God. And whatever season you're going through has an end time. It's going to start and it's going to end and another season is going to come up. So that's why you can't restrict the word to any season. You can't say, oh, when things are good, I believe the word of God. When things are not so good, I don't believe the word of God. No, 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 no. The word is not restricted to any season. Now, the third thing I want to state again as a fundamental or foundation is that the word is real. I love this. The word is real. It is not a fad, neither it is a fashion. And this is very important again for those of us who say we belong to word churches. And I belong to a word church. I'm no longer in an orthodox church. I belong to a word church. What does it really mean to belong to a word church? The word is not a fad. The word is not a fashion. The word is real. But for many of us who say we are word wordites or we believe the word of God, the word is still an abstract and a vague concept because though the word is a person and this person saved us, this is not someone you can tangibly touch or hold on to. So therefore you actually walk with the word and believe the word by faith. If you walk with the word and believe the word by faith, does that make the word abstract? Does it make the word vague? Does it make the word a fad and a fashion? Does it make the word an intangible concept? Is there any tangibility in the word? Glory be to God. I'm asking some very interesting questions here. So the word saved you. The word is a person. But this is not a person you can, you know, I can walk up to my cameraman, Dozzy, and just, you know, slap Dozzy on the shoulder and I'll touch him. Dozzy is a person that can hold him. Can you hold the word? You know, you believe the word by faith. You walk with the word by faith. The day you got born again, you didn't most likely physically see Jesus, but you knew you had given your life to Christ. Something happened on the inside of you. Does that therefore make the word intangible? Does it make it abstract and vague? No, no. The same word, this is very important now, the same word that you, know, you believe by faith, God intended that word to be manifest unto us. And this is where we begin to zero into what this message is all about. Remember, it's called the threefold manifestation of the word. So the word is believed by faith. The word is all you need. The word is real. The word is, is, is not restricted to any season. The word is relevant all the time. God intended for that word, though received by faith, that word to become manifest unto us. Let me give you some definitions for that word manifest. It really becomes clearer, clearer what we're talking about. So to manifest... To manifest from the dictionary means to make clear, to make clear or obvious to the eye or mind, to display or show a quality of feeling by one's acts or appearance, demonstrate, to be evidence of, to prove. But look at what it starts with, to make clear or obvious to the eye or mind, to make clear or obvious to the eye or mind. That's the dictionary definition. Let's take the Greek word that is used for manifest and that's the word phanero p-h-a-n-e-r-o-o -O. what does that word mean phanero it means to render apparent to appear to manifestly declare to manifest forth it comes from a root word that means to shine or to lighten so god expects his word to be manifest to you he expects his word to be rendered apparent to you and this is really the crux of the matter uh, friends, this is how you maximize the word of God in your life. You maximize the word of God by making the word manifest or understanding the several ways, and we're only going to look at three in this message, by which the word 
has become manifest to you. God expects the word to be rendered apparent to you. God expects the word to be clear to you. God expects the word, though walked with by faith and believed by faith, God expects the word to be a tangible concept to you. Something you can, you can bet your life on, let me put it that way. Something that you can say, no, I know without a shadow of doubt that if this is what the word says, then this is what it is. That is how real God expects the word to be to you. And he's manifested his word in several ways. And we're going to look at three of them. So let's start off with this now. So the first one, there are three main ways in which he has done this. First of all, he manifested in the, the word is manifested in the word becoming flesh, in the word becoming flesh. And this is probably the only one we'll look at today. The word became flesh, John 1, 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You know, we can park in this verse and preach five messages from it at the minimum. It says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That word became is the word ginomaya. And if, you know, if I love that word ginomaya, it literally means to create something. It means to come into being. To come into being is a better way to put it. So from this time, the word had never become flesh. There is no time before the time Jesus came that the word became flesh. But the word became manifest. The word became tangible. The word became flesh. The word didn't just become, remember, this is the word that was there in the beginning was the word. And we said the word began the beginning and the word is eternal and does not have an end. So in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. There was a time when he stepped into time. He stepped out of eternity and stepped into time and became flesh. And before this time, the word had never become flesh. Now that was awesome that the word became flesh, but the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Glory be to God. He dwelt, among, he dwelt among us. And that means, that word dwelt means to tent or to encamp, to occupy, to reside, just the way God did in the tabernacle, to reside. So the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Glory be to God. That is one of the ways in which the word of God is manifested. The word became flesh. Let's look at how this happened. Let's look at Luke chapter 1 and verse 26. And this story is relevant to the Christmas season. You know, Luke 1, 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Watch this again, just as an aside. She found favor with God. Favor is undeserved. Favor is unmerited. There was nothing extra special about Mary. There were other Virgins at that time, God could have chosen, but God chose Mary. She found favor with God. She found she was highly favored. She found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? She was a virgin. How can she get pregnant? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that holy one who is to be born will be called the son of God. Now, indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who is called barren, for with God nothing will be impossible. It's interesting here that the angel gave a testimony, and again, this is a, an aside for people who don't like to share testimonies. The angel was trying to get her to believe that the impossible could happen. And what he did was at the end of it, he threw in a testimony. He says, you know that your, that, that's your cousin Elizabeth, that one who's really old? Well, she's already six months pregnant. In case you don't know, this is what God can do. I'm sure that boosted Mary's faith. But you know, in all of this we've just read, Nothing yet had happened. And the next verse is really what makes Mary special. 
So nothing yet had happened. The angel had said all these wonderful things. The child of God, God can say wonderful things about you. And he has said wonderful things about you. So many prophecies have gone on about your life. It is if you do what Mary just did next, what we're about to read, that you begin to see those things become tangible, become manifest. We're talking about the word becoming manifest. There is no point having all the prophets, prophecies all over your life. There's no point knowing what God says about you if you cannot make it manifest or tangible to you. And this is how the word now became flesh. Mary said, Mary said in verse 38, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The angel had gotten all he needed. She made a submission to the word of God. She said, the word of God is all I need. I will submit to the word of God. I don't understand. This is a season of virginity for me. I don't know how this is going to happen, but I've heard you that nothing is impossible with God. So I'm going to yield myself to you. Behold, this is who I am, the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And it is the word of God that became flesh in her. And the miracle came forth and the word was manifest. Child of God, there is a time when the word of God stepped out of the timeless eternity and he plugged into time to become manifest, to become flesh, so that we could see the tangibility of the one who had been with him before the beginning or in the beginning with God. Glory be to God. So for her to get pregnant, for that conception to take place, it needed a marriage of the working of the Holy Spirit and the working of the word of God. And she said, let it be to me according to to your word. What was the purpose for all of this? Again, back to John 1 14. It says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. That glory was the tangibility. We beheld his glory. We began to see that the word was not just a, an abstract concept. Glory be to God. You know, the Bible says that, you know, Jesus showed forth the glory of God when he turned water into wine. Jesus told Lazarus' sisters, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So when we see we beheld his glory, we're not again talking about an in intangible, spooky feeling. We beheld his glory. We saw Lazarus raised from the dead. That was the glory of God in tangibility. That was the word becoming manifest right before us. We saw water turned into wine. It says there that he manifested forth the glory of God. And it says the word became flesh, dwelt among us, and the purpose was that we will behold, we will see his glory. We will understand that this is really what the prophets have spoken about long before this time. We beheld his glory. That word behold is a word that means to look upon, to view attentively, to contemplate, you know, to watch something. It's used like you're watching a theater or you're watching a show or watching a movie. It's used, on, it's used when you talk about important people that are looked upon with admiration. And that's what happened. Jesus walked the, the face of this earth and for three and a half years he ministered and we beheld his glory. The disciples beheld his glory. They saw the, the, the sick healed. They saw the deaf people have their ears open. They saw, the, they saw blind eyes healed. They saw, you know, leprosy leave people. They saw Lazarus and others raised from the dead. They saw Jairus' daughter raised from the dead. That was the word becoming flesh. That was the word being made manifest. And we beheld his glory. Glory be to God. They beheld his glory. They saw him reflect the Father's goodness here on earth. And they watched him like a TV show, child of God. The word is all that you need. You don't need anything else but the word of God. The word is not restricted to any season in your life. Somebody's watching me and you've put the word of God aside. So things are really tough now. I don't really need to go to church. I can't pray anymore. I don't feel like praying. When things get better, then I will get back to the word of God. You know, they're not going to get better. They're not going to get better because the word is the singular anchor dependable anchor in your life as a believer. 
The word will fix things for you. The word will get you back on track. The word will restore where you've been bruised and battered. The word will bring the mercy of God where you've hurt God and where you've done things you should not do. The word is all you need. And don't restrict the word to any good season of your life. Glory be to God. The word is not restricted to any season. The word is real. The word is tangible. The word is not a fad. The word is not a fashion. The word is not about wearing trousers and wearing makeup. I'm a word I No. The word begins with understanding that the one who was in the beginning with God, think about that. He was with God. He was God. But there was a time when he plugged himself out of eternity and he plugged himself into time and he became flesh because the one who was used to give birth to him said, let it be to me according to the word. I will receive everything you have said and leave myself open to be used by you. Let it be to me according to the word. Let that be your prayer, child of God. When you get to the point in any season and any phase of your life, even when you don't understand, Mary did not have her questions properly answered. She really still couldn't get how as a virgin, she would have a child. So you don't depend on the word and rely on the word when you have all the answers. Many of you are watching me and God is speaking to you. You do not have all the answers right now. Let your declaration be, let it be to me according to your word and you will see the tangibility. You will see the word become manifest right before you. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for investing the word in us. We give you all of the praise. We give you all of the glory in the name of Jesus. You have so many questions about your life and life in general. Why, when, how, what, who, and the list goes on. Sister, Jesus is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. He loves you too much to leave you this way. He is knocking on the door of your heart. Will you make a decision for a change today? To surrender your life to Jesus Christ the Son of the Living God. If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, according to Romans 10, 8 to 13, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray, amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. We can help you grow in your new faith so that what has just happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at fresh Dew TV and we will be there for you. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 37 37 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website 
www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Hello, I'm Pastor Nkechi Ene, and thank you for being with us on Fresh Dew today. You can now watch Fresh Dew with Pastor Nkechi Ene every Wednesday, starting from the 4th of October 2017, on My Faith TV, Channel 341, and DSTV at Go TV at 10:30 p.m. Central African Time or 9:30 p.m. Nigerian Time. Faith Terrestrial on Centec 570 at 10:30 p.m. Central African Time or 9:30 p.m. Nigerian Time. Flow TV Africa in Kwese 825 at 11 p.m. Central African Time or 10 p.m. Nigerian Time. Flow TV UK on Sky 595 at 11 p.m. Central African Time or 10 p.m. Nigerian Time. Also on live streaming at streaming.myfaithtv.com. Remember, every Wednesday starting from the 4th of October 2017. For more information, please log on to www.freshdew.tv. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life.